so we are back with another bundesliga round up this week has been really really amazing and uh, we have sort of saha with us again uh, so how did this week pan out for you ah uh, this week was good this week was good uh, you know uh, if you look at it this weekend was about you know teams getting into the getting to the target in respect of you know be it a individual or you know a beat a beat individual getting it getting 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 them to the target or you know as a team so if you look at it you know big teams such as bayern dortmund leipzig were able to scrape results you know as a collective rather than you know any individual player which was unlike last week where you know jordan sancho ruled the roast and you know bayern had other players you know taking over the right. you know uh, goals for the responsibilities and stuff this weekend was more of a collective effort Leipzig also, you know, came back into the game. They came back and you know, equalized in the game because of you know collective effort. You know, after they had an early sending off. Uh, similarly, if you look at it, Dortmund, uh, the you know they had you know chance to thank for that goal. So yeah, as you know, the show progresses. You know, we'll be discussing all these games in detail. And yeah, you know, and this was you know more in you know the collective effort was more in team with you know the global events. You know, regarding right. you know George Floyd's death. uh and black lives matter you know the german fa bundesliga the german fa and the bundesliga have shown their support by you know letting players uh, come out with their messages displaying their messages uh, all the most of the teams took a knee before the game before prior to kick off yes. and there was a show of support by the you know uh, throughout bundesliga at least uh, uh, among all the players and you know and Uh, it shows that you know what germany is doing in terms of you know calling out racism you know and calling out people uh, who are uh, not in i mean who do who 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 are who do not understand the concept of it right. and how important it is in this case germany has been leading uh, the Uh, when it comes to playing football or doing something for football germany has been leading as we know uh, the in in the english fa the women's football league uh, it it actually has been declared uh, as uh, a done league and uh, probably probably uh, uh, chelsea won it yes chelsea did win it and it, it's just because their points uh, per game was better than the others so but whereas in germany the league is still on for for women so it's kind yeah, of germany's kind I, I, of i i read a couple of uh, i read a couple of reports by uh, susan rack of the guardian and you know she had mentioned that you know how the liverpool team is has been suffering and you know how the league was decided and how the liverpool league uh, team uh, women's team has been disbanded and there was a very uh, i think even more or uh, you know one, one of one of those guys uh, one of the you know authors of guardian had written about you know how liverpool as a club you know support the men's team and they are looking for a 30 year wait with the sucker that uh, with the the title but you know how how poorly the women's team has been ignored as a right. result you have the best of team uh, best of players moving out of this club and they have gone on for you know better pastures even the statements of you know the most of the player of the women players leaving liverpool were almost similar in nature as you know they would rather look for better conditions and you know and right. they can play in peace Right. because most of these women footballers uh, at least playing for these uh, you know prestigious clubs which we know of are uh, are you know semi profile semi profile professionals and you know they need to be supported by the club structure and despite you know fa saying endorsing so many you know other uh, you know, press releases and you know through you know vocal uh, support you know there has been very less done at the ground level and as a right. result you know most of And the league has suffered. Yeah, the league has actually suffered. But then uh, PL is yet to begin. So let's get on with the uh, Bundesliga weekly roundup. So let's start with the Leverkusen versus uh, Bayern match. We could see Kai Havertz not being in the game because of an aggravated right, injury. Right. Uh, the start uh, was kind of in Leverkusen's hand. Then how do you think Bayern pulled it up? Oh well. Uh... you know the game you know started off you know very you know bayern style you know bayern looking to dominate the game and all but you know it took the it took a while for them to settle and it was surprising you know when uh, alario gave them the lead it was yeah. on a throw in and you know alario was quick to you know latch on to this you know lob by i think uh, i am 
forgetting by log on uh, logging onto a pass uh, you know made by his teammate and he yeah. spiked to the ball and he it was a very smart finish at the near post exactly. for Kyle it was uh, really cheeky and, finish uh, yeah 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 it was a very cheeky, it was a very tight foot finish uh, right. not not a side it was outside of the boot finish yeah at the it's, near a, post it's like a toe poke with, yes yes you are absolutely correct uh so yeah that was an excellent goal uh, and if you see the replay of the goal you could see that you know uh, david alaba just misjudged you know the offside trap right. so he was he had just stepped up and at the same point of time you know alario had made the run and you know initially it looked like an offside and there was a check at the uh, check with the video and referee before you know they ruled it as a goal so yeah it was a surprise read but uh, then as bayern showed over the course of the game you know they came back and you know there has been a certain terminology used as you know men's versus boys and they right. you know put that uh, they put that uh, to play uh, i mean the first goal if you look at it came off a mistake um, in midfield by diaby he held on to the ball a bit too long and uh, goretzka was quick to dispose of him and immediately looked up and made a two goal Right. Uh, the ball was of such high quality that Koeman had the time, you know, to stagger the cutter, and you know, and then you know, still had the time to you know plant the finish for the keeper. The right. uh, on rushing, I mean, the keeper is not exactly on rushing, but you know, Koeman was had so much space and time that right. he could pick up. And the, he's fast. He he's up. really, really fast. So he yeah, can beat yeah. the defender on foot definitely. And yes, the through ball was really yeah. brilliant. Uh, the left-footed goal by. Leon Goretzka was also like not that good looking goal but it was a really precise and very clinical goal I feel what do you think Yes yes uh, you look at it in the build up you know Goretzka was in fault you know in the initial pass he played his pace without wide and keeps on making his run and you know Muller was there you know to provide his you know uh, record breaking assist yeah uh, and he laid on the ball for Goretzka and he took a, he took on a first time shot and it sneaked in past the keeper it, it it was a goal of very high quality you know it was a very accurate goal yeah. uh, you know the replay might see, in the replay we might see that you know we might feel that the keeper might have could have done better right. but it was not so the uh, keeper was stretched was, already yes the keeper was at full length when the ball was went past him. and uh, let's aside, talk about uh, if yeah. you look at it you know uh, once uh, Uh, Bayern took the lead. Bayern equalized. Yeah. They started dominating the game, and yes. Leverkusen were only, you know, uh, looking to counter, you know, depending on Bayern mistakes to get the ball rather than you know, creating anything for themselves. Right. And uh, it became a uh, very much a one-sided affair. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, it was kind of interesting, but once Bayern started scoring, when the score was two-one, at from that point on, it's it was just Bayern. and the and uh, the goal which uh, Serge Gnabry scored it was also a good setup brilliant setup from a long distance and a clean goal absolutely absolutely uh, i if you if you you know roll back a few minutes before the goal happened you know just a moment before that nabri had a chance you know very well on the ball but too long yes. and you know before that replay could be you know come on come on exactly the screen, you know Bayern had already created another chance, and you know Nabri had scored. Right. So you know that kind of you know you know it, it, I think there was only a 15 second difference between you know the goal being scored and you know uh, Nabri missing the you know earlier chance. Right. So that was you know how quick Bayern were to the ball, and Nabri's finish was an excellent finish. You know from uh, a skip from the uh, almost you know near the outside of the box. Yeah, just edge uh, of the right box. Right into the goal. Yeah. Yeah, it was a brilliant, a uh, brilliant presence of mind and uh, a, a solid goal, to be honest. Right, right, yeah. What do you think about uh, the almost last minute or 89th minute goal by Florian Witts? What do you think I about that? That's goal. kind of an, was an excellent goal. Yeah. So. Yeah. It, it yeah. Was, I, I really enjoyed that goal. Uh, you know, it's not that. Uh, Bayern, Bayern might have dominated the entire game, but you know that was one of uh, I think if you look at all these six goals, this was probably the most uh, best individual. You know, where a combination of team finishes, even the Lewandowski goal, which he, the fourth goal for yeah. Bayern, yeah. which he had uh, scored, you know that was a very uh, excellent team goal. But Florian with goal, you know, the finish was probably the best in that entire game. Right, and Neuer was you know, pissed. 
Neuer like, curled it past uh, Neuer at the you know far post. You know, excellent goal. Man. Right, right. Like these small goals actually from like if I I would vote that goal to be the best in the game. I would vote. Yeah, same, same. I I I would agree with you on that. So, Bayern gets the three points on their way to another uh, Bundesliga title. What do you think Dortmund, how did Dortmund do according to you? It's just a one goal lead. Yeah, the game was much closer than anticipated, you know. Exactly. I mean, uh, uh, Dortmund took the lead and it was not that Hatha is creating clear-cut chances. It's just that, uh, you know, once uh, there was no control Dortmund had over uh, had in this game. And they were lucky to get that uh, goal. Uh, I mean, they had really worked hard to get that goal. And, you know, luck fell their way when, you know, Chan, uh, Chan you know, capitalized on the goal. Because right. uh, in a pri- build-up to the goal, they had been, you know, slowly exerting pressure. And Sancho was guilty of missing a couple of chances, which, you know, he would have scored on any other day. But yeah. uh, thankfully, Chan was there when the chance fell to him. And thereafter, they hung on to that lead. And... By the end of it, you know, it seemed, you know, the stats, you know, started favoring them as they, you know, as it proved that, you know, they had 60 percent position by the end of the game. And, you know, they also had, you know, around 12 shots on target. So, to a certain extent, it's a fair result for the Dortmund team. And uh, I, can't, I don't think Hartha should not getting out, getting anything out of this game. Because the Dortmund deserves those three points. Yeah, all right. So, Hartha kind of was lucky, do you feel, in this game? Because uh, they were, yeah, hurt them. Uh, I, I don't think so. Uh, uh, they, uh, they went, uh, they played, uh, they played, uh, they played to a uh, you know, uh, strategy which they had, you know, come with. They yeah. stuck to their, you know, what they could, you know, they were defensively uh, decent. I would not say he's solid. Uh, not because of the goal considered, because of the amount of chances they let, you know, Dortmund create in and around the box. They were overrun in the box. Although they prevented, you know, multiple shots, they prevented, you know, shots on target or, you know, uh, they were still unable to, you know, respect Dortmund in the midfield, okay. especially the build-up play. And uh, that did result in, you know, them uh, finally conceding when the chance did come across Dortmund's way. Uh, they themselves didn't create anything. Uh, they had only a couple of shots on target. They hardly went forward. I, I don't remember the, you know, completion of passes of that team, of Arthur. But uh, obviously, in the comparison to Dortmund, you know, who played, you know, a lot of quick one twos and, you know, they tried exploring both the flanks before, you know, uh, they, uh, before, you know, getting the lead. So, yeah, that's about it. So, another game which was really, really close was when Paderborn faced RB Leipzig. I definitely, like, honestly, I never expected it to be a, a 1-1 affair. A one goal share each right, affair. Right, right. Like I never expected it. Yes, Upa Meccano did get a red card uh, in like towards the ending of the first half at the forty third minute. But I don't think a red card would have made such a difference, uh, especially when you're Leipzig and you're facing Paderborn. It's a, like hell and hell difference in the table. I, I I guess so. You you could say that way given the quality of the players you know Leipzig has on them. But you know Paragon, uh, you know they did, they just were uh, you know different high. You know they were the ones who uh, took the lead. Uh, uh, you know they took the lead in the twenty third. Uh, sorry, they, sorry. They uh, despite Leipzig taking the lead in the twenty seventh minute through Schick, you know they knew for a fact that you know they had an entire half. They almost had I think uh, around fifty minutes. Where they, where they could, uh, you know, uh, where the, uh, 50 minutes to unlock the, uh, you know, Leipzig defense. And they kept on persisting, they kept on persisting, and it was only in the, you know, 90th minute, you know, when the finally, you know, uh, Strod- Strodic, you know, Christian Strodic, you know, he managed to score that goal. And it was a great goal. Yeah, you know, the goal was to, good. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, if, if this continues for Leipzig, this, these three points were actually very important for them to qualify for the UEFA Champions League next season. And next season, they won't yeah. be having Timo Warner with them. So, it's going to be a bit tough, do you feel? Yes, it's key. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know whether how tough it will be for Leipzig, you know, because they have always had a plan B. 
uh, they have always let the you know best of players leave for you know the other leagues you know the it is now be kaita back for a couple of seasons back and he let when he was let that go to liverpool and right. werner has always been uh, you know a target for you know other european clubs but uh, you know if they if you look at the system in which they play they have uh, always had that younger players you know and they do not have that much that many experienced players in the squad but they play like a very experienced squad you know it's a very uh, yeah it's very weird to very see very well oiled machine yeah, you know exactly see, you, like you have to understand when you compare it to say a bayern or a dortmund you know they have you know structures in place you know they have been playing a certain type of football and you know it, it, there has always been a certain amount of experience there's always this uh fine balance between you know uh, you know the older players and the younger players right and you know experienced players you know in terms of games in terms of age you know you have that you know dressing room which is a mix and match leipzig that way you know uh, it's more of a younger squad even right. you know the team the club is a young club you know and uh, it's more of you know us against them mentality you know it's a very kind of a you know, close knit club you know it's, it's, it's like a boys hostel to the it's like a boys uh, hostel i wouldn't say uh, i i wouldn't say that uh, because like it, it's it's not same thing right you know you right. cannot compare you know football to you know you know general stuff you know because you know they have to buy into the you know ideology of that club you know okay. they want to play right. and uh, if you look at it most players are brought to this club you know the younger players are given the vision that you know you will be playing a bit more it's right. very much similar to dortmund dortmund has been having this has been doing that you know over a much more longer period of time right. so you know you know it's a much more uh, trustworthy you know say you know when dembele made the move or sancho made the this move they have you know, proved uh, they have a track record of uh, creating great players lewandowski is like one of the best right now in the world he actually developed in dortmund and then he flourished right. in fc bayern uh, musa dembele yeah. Usman Dembele I'm sorry these are just some of the new ones and uh, you know the, the, the other than that you know the earlier Klopp team you know which which had Kagawa Sai Nuri Sai Gundogan and you know yeah Gundogan you know as well as uh, Mkhitaryan so all, yeah. all these these were major players you know their their entire squad was replaced you know one by one you know and it's a very good model which is sustained right like like that they have not exactly implemented this model because they have held on to players for a longer period of time and uh, i think warner is probably going to be the highest profile player to move out of leipzig uh, earlier i think keta has keta was also a big name but then uh, he hasn't proven himself that much of liverpool to exactly. actually get that tag at this point of time but yes one is a proven product and it will be very interesting to see how he adapts to chelsea because uh, if you look at it like you know they are moving on the premier league yeah, chelsea already have you know enough you know attacking uh, players yeah, it's going to be a fight them. for him to get a chance in the forward line yeah he 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 seems a good alternative option to you know tammy abraham obviously and given that chiru is you know lack space so he might be you know the preferred option uh and it will also give you know frank lampard to actually play both of them together because uh, if you look at it uh, uh timo werner also comes in from the left but nagelsmann this season he has changed his position by starting him more towards the center and letting right. him float to the left instead of you know vice versa which was happening in the earlier season where he used to float in from the left now he floats outside towards the left but primarily sticking to a central position which helps him you know uh, yes. you know be on goal side you know all the time and as a result he's he has been more clinical and he has gotten more goals exactly. the most goals the season actually uh no second most goals in bundesliga yeah so means the mo- most goals for him for, on a personal level yes absolutely absolutely yeah. so he has been deployed in the central part more but he has been actually uh, what julian nagelsmann did is he plays him when the need comes he actually goes on the right when he, the need comes he actually goes on the left so once he is position central he can both score he can also carry out defenders to make space for other players to score like sabitzer for them to come up and score so i think he had a brilliant season uh, do you think he should have stayed here for another one more season just to develop these oh, things well, I, i was uh, reading this piece by andy brassen uh, and uh, according to him um, you know warner has always chosen to you know 
uh, go along his own path you know he and he really adores the fact that you know a club or you know a set of people you know when they pay attention to him you know if you look at it you know bayern was interested in him uh, in the earlier part of this uh, earlier, last summer and you know nothing materialized and you know then uh, you know the look for what it was replaced and you know hanshik was brought into place and hanshik wanted to renew that interest but uh, then then liverpool came in and even liverpool had second thoughts given the covid situation and you right. know the amount of losses whether they wanted to spend that much on a player so all this uh, chelsea was the only one which showed you know real intent which has shown real intent according to uh, you know newspaper reports and according to warner's perspective so that is why you know it is uh, you know he choosing to move is something is uh, you know and he's going to get value and uh, Yeah, he's going to get value. Like, uh, I think bottom mark, I think at ten point six million. I think at that point of time, when he was I, brought in, I'm not aware in. about it. Pardon? When he was brought in to Leipzig. Yes. Uh, I am not aware of the transfer fee. Of. Yeah. So, but anyway, yeah, uh, Leipzig is planning to make but, a profit on a player. But getting uh, getting him for sixty six is say fifty. Uh, Fifty-five million, yeah. Fifty-five uh, pounds, I guess. Fifty-five million pounds. Yeah, it's it's a uh, yeah. I, that that's the roundabout figure. Uh, yeah. Fifty odd, uh, fifty to fifty-five odd. You yeah. Know. Yeah. So uh, that's a bargain, I feel. That figure is something. That's it, really it, it, cheap. Oh, it, it's, uh, it's a good value for money according to the market. Uh, you know, because you have had you know more uh, proven players or you know unproven players going for much. Larger fees. The biggest example being Dembele itself. And, yes. And uh, well, that might not have worked out for Barcelona at this point of time. But uh, he's in the hospital most of the time. Yes, that's a yeah. huge amount. It's all clubs won't be able to afford that amount. Like that, the cost of Musa Dembele is actually two or three years budget of some lower tier clubs. Like lower tier, I mean in the lower uh, part of a table in Bundesliga. Like that's the budget. They have thirty, forty million that's, that's budget story, a season. You know, football uh, does football most or more most football clubs does have this. You know, you know, not all clubs are equal actually, right. and uh, uh, you know, it's more of a, the money is a more of a filter system. You know, if the big clubs are the ones you know gaining the money, and you know they have tie ups with smaller clubs, and they are the ones who stand to benefit. So that is the structure football is currently following, and yes, uh, uh, it might seem like an outrageous fee. and probably after the current covid situation there will be a revision of you know how clubs approach but uh, given right. the fact that chelsea has already seen the deal uh, it is according to a lot of other grassroots uh, you know personal involved in grassroots level they are not too unhappy about it because as long as the money comes to the you know uh, close down to the you know, smaller club right. and it helps them survive and develop talent i think uh, It's fine, but yeah. uh, because they are the factories. Clubs may may have a tie up, so you might see a lot of smaller clubs disappearing, and that's the right. biggest worry. Yeah, because they are the factories for the big clubs. They create those players. They build the foundation of those players who go on to be yes, good yes, that's, and that's great true, players. That's true. Right. So, right. Uh, so let's move on from this match and. Uh, Let's talk a bit about uh, the Union Berlin and Schalke match. Uh, for for the first first few minutes or maybe the first twenty minutes, I thought Schalke is going to go without three points once again, without a single point. Schalke needed that three points, and Union Berlin did need that three points. But the whole match was in the hands of Union Berlin. Schalke did not do anything. They somehow got the goal. Yes, the goal was good, but. Schalke is not in their game. They are just not in the game. They are in a free fall. We were talking about it last day, but they are in a free fall still. They are not being able to pick things up. They are not getting, not being able to get themselves together and work as a team. Uh, Union Berlin, they have created more chances, and Schalke, what they're doing is they are going to the final third, and then they are messing up and not being able to go further. What do you have to say about this? Like if this continues, they are going to lose a position in any of the European spots this season, like in the coming season. 
see uh, at this point of time you know with the and not much games to go for games left with only four games left uh i think uh, you know shalke just will look to concentrate on ensuring that you know they can end this run of you know defeat and they'll just look to scrape a win together and you know probably survive this season uh i think european football is out of the question at this point of time because they have fallen weight behind uh since the start of this league they have still not been able to get the get the this is the first point they got since the uh, league has resumed so they are already seven points off the pace in the of the of a probable european spot so i think uh, schalke are out of the running with respect to european spot for sure until unless you know results go there yeah, yeah. uh and you know other teams feel to be to Uh, other teams fail to beat their respective opponents, but uh, it was good to see Schalke get a point. Uh, as as far as the gameplay is concerned, uh, you know there is no cohesiveness even now. Right. Uh, there is a certain element of you know uh, you know as to what what exactly to do. I think they are good. The the mean uh, fact that you know they're concentrating more on set pieces, trying to score more from set pieces. That's point of the fact that you know that is one thing they are clear about. But uh, uh rest of the game you know there is not that much cohesiveness and it is contributing to this you know right. poor run of results what shalke I, i have observed is that shalke is not the best or not even average in any of the aspects of a game they're not average in defense they're leaking they're not average in midfield in the midfield they are losing the ball like every now and then they're not being able to finish they're scoring rate from free kicks or set pieces are less than that of union berlins and where do you think uh, wagner should work on like the team is in a very bad situation right now and i won't be surprised if if this continues in the next season as well they might as well be relegated in the next season because the way they have fall, fallen four games to you Well, see, like I said earlier, you know, it's just that you know they haven't been able to pull themselves out of this bad run of form, and where they go on from here will uh, obviously dictate how they act over the summer. Probably they might they need a few players here and there. Uh, David Wagner is not that bad a coach. But, yeah, he's not uh, bad. I'm just worried like about with, what he's going to do. Like with Huddersfield uh, in the Premier League, and even this season, uh, and even. His debut season in the Premier League. It's the second half of the season, he has had trouble dealing with, and this has this is something which is consistent. Uh, now, whether the club hierarchy continue to support him or not support him, that yes. will I am probably sure they that is a call they take over the summer, because you cannot have you know a Jekyll and Hyde situation again with Schalke, right? If you are having a first half of the season where, where they were brilliant, you know they were you know playing some fantastic football. Yes. but it is the second half of the season after the you know winter break uh, that you know they have been able to you know replicate that kind of form so whatever happens from here on uh, will be very very important to david wagner's future rather than the club's future because there is a certain acceptance within the club that you know they might not be in europe next season right. but yes they know where they have to improve on yes uh, and they have been suffering from a lot of major and important injuries so that is something they should look for look after in the next season because if the same thing happens in the next season they won't be able to come back again because they start strikers like uh kibo book uh, book staller these players actually are if the, even if they do not score they hold the ball and they help other score so these players are missing in the squad so they and they do not have any plan b for that and that's why they are suffering so hopefully they are going to pick up and hopefully we'll see uh, schalke back in european nights uh what do you think about the werder and uh, wolfsburg match it was i didn't have a chance to see that game uh, it was a really physical I just, game uh, i i didn't have a chance to see the game or the highlights of that but uh, you know i read the i i just saw the match report and under that you know wolfsburg had scored and it was time you know that you know he got on score sheet so yeah like it's a result that works out well for both the teams you know both the teams have been they are in mid table and you know it's 
really doesn't matter to them and uh, not a bad result i guess you know what do ramen are already looking at you know yeah what is you know, relegation, like relegation in the relegation are, uh, so it was a result you know which is which they wouldn't have welcome for sure and yes. uh, as for well now wolfsburg uh, might have a chance to go on for uh, a european spot as well as hoffenheim they are in the competition now we'll see what happens uh, but here hoffenheim uh, actually could have won the match against dusseldorf did you watch the match uh, the hoffenheim game yes hoffenheim game uh, Hoffenheim should have won the game in my opinion because Dusseldorf is not such a big competition as they are in 16th position in the league table Hoffenheim in 7th uh the game was in Hoffenheim's half most of the time but giving out penalties like that in the 5th minute and in the 76th minute giving out penalties as equalizers is never never something uh something positive or it's it's something that shows that the defense lacks composure because you're scoring goals and then you're giving away simple and silly penalties and that's why you're uh, you're not getting the three points which you deserve and also uh, when it comes to the stability in the defense benjamin hobner got a red card in the ninth minute what do you have to say about that what does that say about uh, the defense of hoffenheim Uh, clearly, I mean, uh, I, I I didn't have an opportunity to see the game, so I I only saw a few of the games this week, and I saw a couple a couple of them on Saturday, and you know, just I did I saw one game. But uh, yes, uh, from uh, from the looks of it, like you have a chance to see the game, and you know, like I'll go with your words, saying that you know how the defense lack some composure and everything. I will review. I haven't had the chance, so you know, I I can't say much about that game. So, yeah. Fair enough. Uh. what do you think uh the augsburg and cologne match concluded how how would you rate the match uh, the, the, this was a good game yeah this was the, i think the final game of the weekend I, i i had a chance to see this game and you know the result was uh, actually a fair result you know that uh, the game was game didn't have that much in it. uh till the 80th minute it was a very hot 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 game and uh, you know it was like none of the team could score last 10 minutes the game picked up you know uh, with modeste you know coming on to score a beautiful beautiful uh, volleyed uh, left left foot finish uh, yeah, this is his you know, second time ball. he has been coming on and then scoring so he is a veteran player yeah uh, so uh, con was good that way that they deserve that lead but uh, augsburg uh, did have the chance to you know take a uh, lead in the start of the early at the start of the game when they had a penalty awarded to them when you know, timo horn uh, you know on keeper you know he just uh, you know he just wandered into that uh, you know the striker and uh, the, he gave away the penalty but he got down in time to you know say it was a fantastic save uh, of you know of a lender i think the player's name was needle needle her needle needle learner Yeah. So that was the name of the player, and he missed this penalty. It was a good shot, but you know, on just flew across his goal and you know saved it. Uh, Philip Max of Augsburg was probably the most influential player in that game. Uh, he is uh, he is playing in left of defense, but he was at the heart of everything in the initial uh, stages of the game. At least for the first half of the first half of the first half, uh, he was there, you know, delivering set pieces and you know Augsburg. did we winning the second ball uh they as a result you know the left back at that point of time had to be had picked up a yellow card and had to be substituted so that you know he couldn't he, did, he didn't get himself sent off so also were attacking at that till that point of time and as the match progressed uh con just looked to you know steady the ship they you know they did get chances uh never a clear cut chance uh the only clear cut chance fell you know post in the 85th minute and not and that was also not a clear cut chance it was a very difficult chance you yeah. know uh it, the ball was going away 
uh, and you know he had to hit a first time shot and put it past the keeper. But the equalizer was a beautiful goal. You know, the, it was moments after you know yeah, the three uh, minutes after the lead. the lead. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of minutes after they had taken the lead. You know, they went forward and Max Philip Max. You know the way he planted that finish past you know uh, Tim Hahn, who had had an excellent game, uh, was you know indicative of the result that they deserved. Yeah, so uh, how would you rate this match? Uh, the best match in terms of uh, both the teams being as close as possible or, and the score line is also a deserved score line. So 1-1, one, one, it's a deserve. Uh, so what do you think? I, I would vote it, yeah, it, it uh, to was, be the it, best it match. Wanna... I would win. Because, I, you I know, wouldn't say it was the yeah, because I would say it was the best game of, this, uh, of the weekend. Uh, I would say the, uh, it, it was a... Uh, you know the stakes were high in the game, so right. you know the players gave it gave it their all. Uh, but in terms of quality, it probably was not the best viewing game. I think uh, Leverkusen Bayern over the weekend was a very extremely entertaining for viewers. Uh, obviously, there was an element of you know one sidedness uh, acceptance that you know Bayern would be Bayern yeah. were you know bulldozing that game. But you know Leverkusen, you know at certain moments they did you know try and push Bayern. And obviously, if say you know, uh, Bayern would have held on to that early lead for a, uh, say at least till that end of the first half, then we could have had a much more entertaining second, entertaining game for that matter. But uh, yeah, in, in terms of entertainment, I think the Bayern game was the most entertaining over the weekend, rather than the uh, relegation six pointer, which was the last game of the week. Weekend. Fair enough. Well said. Uh, we have another week coming up. Uh, another week match day. So, these matches uh, won't be as good as uh, what we have seen this, this week, but uh, let's go through some predictions. Uh, Hoffenheim is going to host RB Leipzig. What do you think is going to be the scoreline after they have drawn with Paderborn? What do you think? Are the, there are a couple of midweek uh, DFB semi-finals as well. So, the cup, cup, cup games are also there, no? Yeah, there are a few. So, uh, I, yeah. I think I think uh, we are in the next week is going to be a decider. I feel so. For who is going to be relegated? For who is going yeah, to be in, in the? Uh, with in terms of relegation, yes, uh, uh, the league is more or less settled, right? And uh, yes. with, uh, with with respect to the relegation, I think. Uh, Paderborn are more or less going down. I think there Paderborn is, is going down. I'm sure about it. Paderborn is going down, you know, because uh, they are currently on 20 points, and if they win the next four games, also they'll reach 32. And Werder Bremen. Yes, and uh, I think they are. will only. I I think uh, Mainz, Dusseldorf, and Werder Bremen are the only teams, you know, who are going to be a part of this, uh, you know, relegation battle. Right. Because I see Union Ber- Union Berlin. Uh, Augsburg and Conley, you know, just creeping it fast. Yes, and, uh, they are in the safe zone, by the way. See. Yeah, I mean, even Mainz for that matter, Mainz for that matter, you know, are in a safe zone. You know, they still have a three point lead out of right. the four games. And, uh, uh, and they, has, they and have uh, picked up their game a bit. They have recently picked up their game a bit. And they're playing better. Yeah, Mainz have, been get, Mainz have been getting better results. Uh, Dusseldorf haven't been. They haven't been, you know, be able to pick up points. They are playing this good, you know, attacking brand of football, you know, right. good to watch and everything. But uh, at the end of it, they're conceding also left, right, and center, yeah, and right. that doesn't help them. It's the cause at this point of time, and especially, you know, this point of time in the league, they have already conceded sixty. Uh, they have already conceded what sixty goals. Uh, that's so, a, well, like plain yeah. and blatant that's leakage. That's what good, you say? Yeah, Werder Bremen and you know Paderborn, you know they deserve to be you know the bottom two. You know they are they have conceded both of the each. But uh, you know even Mainz for the matter has conceded the two goals. But you know at the end of it, you know uh, they're still playing a better brand of football, and you know, whatever is helping them survive. So yeah, let's see. Uh, Next week is, you know, sir, too early to break, I guess, uh, you know, probably, you know, sometime midweek is something, uh, it would be an appropriate time. You know, there might be, you know, certain, uh, let's uh, look at the, you know, midweek uh, fixtures, you know, the uh, cup matches. 
based on that you know we can uh, probably have a look at it then all right we will be covering that as well uh so thank you uh, uh for being here once again and uh yeah, yeah it's my pleasure thank you for you know doing uh, doing this on a you know regular basis yeah and uh, hopefully you know as the as the time goes along we'll be able to you know deliver better content you know absolutely no more views absolutely uh-huh. <laughs> so like bundesliga is that that league which has kept a uh, crazy maniac fans like us alive in this phase uh no i can't deny that because we most of the people in our country are used to watching premier league and la liga but bundesliga has given their that flavor of life football when everything was stuck and nothing was being played no life football so in that in that uh, perspective i would say bundesliga has served us really well and a few more weeks to go uh before we conclude the bundesliga match and by then uh, the premier league and the cdi is going to resume as well so yeah yeah we will have more football to you know talk about yes uh, football is going to be back and i hope ev- each and every viewers out there are safe and going by the protocols yeah. going by the safety protocols as given by your government and if you like this please share and subscribe and uh do keep following us as we'll be back with rounds uh, roundups every weekend and it's not just going to be bundesliga once the premier league la liga and serie a resume so we'll be covering it all and uh that's sort of saha for you and uh, we'll be back soon again yeah bye thank you <laughs>